بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله My dear brothers and sisters السلام عليكم ورحمة الله I hope all of you and your families are doing fine and passing these days with success الحمد لله we are in the days of Eid al-Adha the Eid of sacrifice so Eid Mubarak happy Eid Eid Kareem I Pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept all of your efforts, all of your services, all kinds of sacrifices that you have offered for the sake of obedience of Allah. May Allah accept all of them and reward you with great rewards. Ameen. And I hope that you are passing these great days of Eid with happiness and joy and you have been able to uh, visit and meet some family members and relatives and friends and could connect with the rest of your uh, friends and others. The days of Eid al-Adha are really great days in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, Eid al-Adha is not just about a mere uh, ritual celebration, but it is full of uh, lessons and reminders to refresh our commitment to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to evaluate the degree of our sacrifices indeed. The Eid of uh, Eid, uh, Adha uh, has all kinds of uh, lessons behind it. But before we talk about the lessons, let us quickly review the life of Ibrahim alayhi salam uh, so that we can appreciate what he has gone through and especially in this last story of sacrifice. See, Ibrahim alayhi salam grew up in an environment where people were worshipping his statues and idols and they were worshipping his stars and a moon and sun. And when Ibrahim alayhi salam grew up as a young man with the pure uh, uh, fitra, with the pure innate nature that he had, you know, he questioned the worship of people and he was using a logical approach to develop his faith, his belief. And he looked at the skies and he looked at the stars and the moon and the sun and one by one he concluded that these things cannot be worthy of my worship. They cannot be my Rab, my Lord, because they are finite. They have all of their own limitations. And he concluded that the one who has created this universe, the heavens and the earth, he is the one that I should worship. He is my real Rab and Lord. Yes. So he developed his faith using a rational approach and then he um, had such a strong belief in Iman that after that, no matter what Allah asked him, he was ready to move ahead without any kind of reservation or hesitation. And that's what strong faith, strong belief brings when it is developed properly. Alhamdulillah, Ibrahim alayhi salam, you know, started his invitation after he became a prophet and he invited people to worship one God, their true uh, Lord and their creator and the creator of this universe. And Ibrahim alayhi salam asked them to leave the worship of those false gods. But his people and community not only did not listen to him, but they even wanted to kill him to the extent that the king of the time you know put a huge fire and put uh, Ibrahim alayhi salam in the middle of the fire and the whole community was watching Ibrahim alayhi salam being burned but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in a miraculous way you know he intervened and he ordered the fire to be cool on Ibrahim and after the whole fire was ended Ibrahim alayhi salam was smiling at them and cool subhanallah uh, intact. At this time, Ibrahim alayhi salam uh, felt that, you know, these people, no matter what I did, you know, they are not listening to me. And he, so he kind of gave up on them and he thought of migrating to another land to continue his dawah. But in the same time, he felt that he is getting old and he wants uh, someone to continue this mission. And he didn't have any children, so he asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give him a son. And while he was very old man, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did hear his dua and did accept his dua and gave him the son who was Ismail. Ismail literally means that Allah heard it. 
and Allah heard and so he, he named it Ismail and Ismail after he's born not very long uh, after that while he is still a baby uh, Allah put Ibrahim alayhi salam into another test that now he should take his wife Hagar and uh, Ishmael or Ismail from Palestine all the way to the deserts of Mecca and leave them there and Hagar asked uh, Ibrahim you're leaving us here and going back said yeah that's what Allah asked me said, okay if Allah asks you don't worry about us go because they had also a strong faith uh, so uh, Ismail grew up in Mecca with the mother and with lots of hardships and sacrifices and now when Ismail is grown up is about 13 years old that now the father is uh, starting to have hope and the mother that our son is now grown up and he's going to be an arm and a support for us at this time Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala puts the parents in a bigger test and Ibrahim السلام, sees a dream that uh, a vision that he is to slaughter his son and the vision of the prophets are you know it's a, a revelation it is inspiration from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and uh, he came to his son and said uh, oh my dear son this is what I had in my vision what do you think what should what should we do he consulted his son and the son with a very beautiful strong faith he said daddy go ahead whatever Allah asks you to do do it and you will find me to be patient and steadfast subhanallah both of them and the mother all three of them equally submitted to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to his order and when Ibrahim alayhi salam was ready to slaughter his son the angel showed up and said Ya Ibrahim, oh Ibrahim congratulations you just passed the test and here is a sheep slaughter the sheep Allah wants you to slaughter a sheep Allah just wanted to test you subhanallah and so not only Allah saved Ismail alayhi salam in this uh, act of sacrifice but as a reward Allah gave him another son a second son who is Isaac or Ishaq alayhi salam this is how it works when you give sacrifice in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so the story of sacrifice is a very beautiful and powerful story and you know imagine Ismail alayhi salam Ibrahim alayhi, and Ibrahim alayhi salam and Hagar they were human beings like you and me they have feelings they have love they have uh, they have love for their positions for their family for their children for each other and how they become ready to give those beloved things to them for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala indeed it's something to think about it very deeply this story has all kinds of lessons for us and all kinds of reminders but uh, let us if we can uh, you know mention just a few of those lessons very briefly and quickly uh, first of all Ibrahim salam and Ismail salam taught us that what does it mean to submit yourself and to say I am a Muslim because when you say I am a Muslim meaning means I am surrendering my will to the will of Allah it means that I am ready to submit and I'm ready to obey whatever Allah asks me to do all the commands of Allah I will obey this is what the meaning of is a Muslim is the meaning of Islam so uh, they taught us that when you say I am a Muslim how ready you should be to listen and obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala whether his commands come through his book or through his prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and they beautifully submitted and they submitted completely and totally in all areas of life some of us we are submitting very well in certain areas of life but in some other areas of life we are not or we are partially submitting you know not fully and this is the lesson because Allah says Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu tkhulu fi silmi kaffah in Surah Al-Baqarah that all oh, believers enter into Islam wholeheartedly wholeheartedly not just partially not just you know in certain areas and also make every aspect of your life an aspect of service to Allah 
and uh, sub, uh, submit yourself in every aspect. Allah says in another verse, قُلْ إِنَّ صَلَاتِي وَنُسُكِي وَمَحْيَايَ وَمَمَاتِي لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ Say that my prayers, my sacrifices, my life and my death, all are for Allah, the Lord of the universe. Yes, this is how we should submit ourselves and we should try to identify which areas of life I have not submitted properly or I have not submitted at all that I can start submitting or at least I can move in that direction. This is what counts in the eyes of Allah, our efforts, our intentions. The second lesson that we can take from this episode is the kind of love, the nature of love that Ibrahim and Ismail السلام, showed to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That when you say that I love Allah, that love should be above all other loves. We better love Allah more than anything else because no one has given us all those things that Allah has given us. And no one will give us in the next life what Allah will give. And so let us reflect on it that why we are not loving Allah at the highest level. And if we do love Allah at the highest level, then we should show it through uh, giving up certain uh, positions that we have. You know, Ibrahim alayhi uh, salam and, uh, and his wife Hagar, you know, they had one son and one child and that has just grown up. So that was like the biggest investment for them. But Allah tested them whether they love that son or they love Allah more than the son. And they passed the test. And Ismail alayhi salam, for him, everything was his life. And he was ready to give his life for the sake of Allah. And he showed that Allah is more beloved to me than my own life. Yes. So we should ask ourselves that in what areas I need to uh, love Allah more than that thing. We, there are a lot of things that we love. There are a lot of things that we like. And we are not willing to give up. But it is now a time to remind ourselves that how I can bring some changes. And how I, I can stop certain bad habits and certain things that I'm doing which I'm not, which I'm not supposed to do. And also there are certain things that I want to do or I'm supposed to do but I, we, are, we are delaying and we're postponing it why we are not doing it we should remind ourselves and also there are a lot of things that uh, we have uh, opinion about preferences views habits that we like how can we change them for the sake of Allah for the sake of obedience of Allah yes that love should be demonstrated through sacrifices and you know, sacrifices can be divided into two different kinds. There are one kind of sacrifices which are measurable or tangible, such as our time, our money, other things that we give. You know, we can quantify it and people can see in others. But there are other kinds of sacrifices that are not measurable, they are not tangible. Things such as our ego, our views, our opinion, things that we like so much that only Allah knows how much we like it and we know and others cannot understand it. So this is where the test comes that how we can give those things that are very beloved to us. Because Allah says, لَن تَنَالُوا الْبِرَّ حَتَّى تُنْفِقُوا مِمَّا تُحِبُّونَ You cannot reach the level of piety, the ideal level of piety until you spend in the cause of Allah what you love. Yes. This is the test. And actually, when we give it, Allah will not only give that back to us, but much more in the next life and even in this life. That's the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And actually, Allah, since He owns everything, so the concept of sacrifice, if you really think about it, you know, if Allah has given you the time, the money, the everything, and then when you give it back to them, is this really sacrifice? I mean, it's just giving it back to the owner. <laughs> But Allah calls it sacrifice so we can feel good that I have done something and we get also reward for it. Another lesson that we can take from this episode of sacrifice is that, you know, looking at Ibrahim alayhi salam and Ismail alayhi salam, that they are two different generations uh, and they have grown up in two different areas of the world and two different cultures. But how they both come equally 
uh, when it comes to the obedience of Allah, how equally they submit to Allah. You know, when Allah asks them to do this, they don't say that, the boy doesn't say that, Dad, you're another generation and it's easier for you, but it's not as easy for me, it is difficult. You know, I have grown up in a different culture and this and that. No, they both submit equally to Allah. So uh, we must try that, uh, and, and we, we should have this confidence that I can submit as good as my dad and my grandfathers and mothers, and but even better than them, and I can compete with them. Yes. You know, some cultural differences is understandable, or understandable, uh, like taste of food or taste of clothing or taste of jokes, you know, if you're grown up in a different environment, that's understandable. But not obedience of Allah. When it comes to obedience of Allah, everybody can compete with anybody else, with any other generation. And that should not be an excuse as long as we want to, because Allah is with us wherever we are, wherever we grow up, Allah is with us and Allah will support us when we want to obey Him. And we can obey Him, we obey Him better than anybody else. We should have this courage and confidence that I can move forward and I can become better than any other generation of my family. SubhanAllah. This is such a great lesson. And there are many other lessons uh, that we can talk about, but we suffice to these few points and it is time to uh, renew uh, our level of commitment to Allah. This uh, time of, uh, you know, uh, Eid of sacrifice is really a time to tune up our lifestyles and, and make certain changes uh, so that our life is submerged in the obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in totality. Now, it is Eid al-Adha, so let us just reflect a little bit on the word Eid also. Eid literally means a return, but it is a return to a happy time. Return to a happy time on an annual basis. That's what kind of definition of the Eid is. And so Eid is about having a happy time, a celebration, a festivity. And in that meaning, the Quran also uses the word Eid in uh, Surah number 5, uh, verse 114. Allah mentions that uh, Jesus said, قَالَ إِسَى بْنُ مَرْيَمْ اللَّهُمَ رَبَّنَا أَنزِلْ عَلَيْنَا مَائِدَةً مِّنَ السَّمَاءِ تَكُونُ لَنَا عِيدًا لِأَوَّلِنَا وَآخِرِنَا وَآيَةً مِّنْكِ When Isa a.s. Jesus says that, Ya Allah, O our Lord, send a table of food down to us from the oven so that it becomes a eat for us, a festivity for us, for people before us and after us, and so that it becomes a sign and a miracle from you. So the word Eid has been used in the Quran in the meaning of a happy time and occasion, uh, celebration. And also Prophet Muhammad وسلم, said that, one day he said to Abu Bakr uh, Siddiq, the first caliph of Islam, that Ya Abu Bakr, inna likulli qawmin eidan wa hadha eiduna. That O oh, Abu Bakr, every group of people has some kind of eid and this is our eid. Then he said, eat and drink and enjoy yourself and remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in these days. So remembrance of Allah is the key that you should celebrate in a way that Allah is pleased. And uh, do not forget Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in any occasion, especially in these days. Yes, so Eid is such a meaning, meaningful concept of happy occasion. And Ali, the fourth uh, caliph of Islam, uh, 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 may Allah be pleased with him, he said that any day that you do not do a sin is a day of Eid. Any day that you do not do a sin, it's a day of Eid. So Eid is about purity. Eid is about getting away from sins. And that's the concept of return, return to our origin, because originally when we came to this world, we were pure, free from sins. Yes. Eid is also a time to renew our relationships, to refresh our relationships, you know, especially with those family members and relatives and friends that we may have some ill feelings in between. This is the time to say that, I'm going to make a call. I'm going to send a text. I'm going to 
you know, contact so and so and say Eid Mubarak. In spite of the fact that I feel that I, it's not my fault, it's my, in spite of the fact that we feel that he's the one to be blamed or she's the one to be blamed, but let us take that first step and get the reward from Allah. Because of Allah, we do that and we expect our reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yes, that will really change and that will make the Eid historical for us. And also, it is the time to reflect on the spirit of sacrifice that how I can maintain the spirit of sacrifice throughout the year until next Eid al-Adha so that I can continue to sacrifice every day my desires, my ego, my wishes for the sake of Allah in obedience of Allah every time that I we want to offer a prayer you know sometimes you know I like to do this and instead I like to no 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 I want to offer the prayer so that's a sacrifice so we are doing sacrifices every day and subhanallah these are the essence uh, these are the teachings and essence of Eid al-Adha that Ibrahim salam and Ismail salam you know followed and submitted and their teachings were distorted but Prophet Muhammad sallallahu wasallam revived those teachings for us and that now alhamdulillah we have it in full uh, and Muslims are truly the, the, the true followers of Ibrahim alayhi salam and Ismail alayhi salam and others they just talk about them but we walk we do the walk and, and, and uh, is real uh, uh, following of Ibrahim alayhi salam May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help all of us to take some extra steps towards uh, Him and may Allah help us to have the courage and confidence to offer more and more sacrifices for His sake. May Allah increase uh, His love for us and we love Him more and we uh, do for Him more and we submit to Him in, in totality and in full meaning. And may Allah help all Muslims all over the world to do so and may Allah help us to share this message with other friends and others and uh, also with non-Muslims so they can see the beauty of Islam. Amin ya Rabbil Alameen wa jazakum Allahu khayran wa salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.